Hello, this video will introduce the first of three dimensions of practice from the UK PSF titled Areas of Activity. During this video, I will go through each of the areas of activity elements and give you some examples around what types of activity from your practice might be relevant for addressing each element. If you would like some general introductory information regarding the UK PSF, then please watch the video titled Introduction to the UK PSF before continuing. The areas of activity dimension sits at the core of the UK PSF and contains five descriptors or categories which broadly describe aspects of teaching and learning or supporting learning practice. I will go through each of these descriptors individually to give you an idea of what types of things might relate to each descriptor. The first descriptor of this dimension is titled Design and Plan Learning Activities and or Programs of Study. This relates to any experience you might have had in designing a unit of learning. This unit of learning could be interpreted as single sessions, tutorials, lab demonstrations or larger teaching blocks such as seminar or tutorial series, a module or an entire program of study. There is no restriction as to who the recipient of this learning can be, so long as it has taken place within a higher education setting. So for example, you can consider designing a workshop or training session for Imperial staff as a unit of learning eligible for this area of activity, even though they might not be Imperial College registered students. Another relevant example would be if you contribute to the creation of learning resource packs and computer-based or open learning materials, or if you contribute to the design and development of virtual learning environments. Overall, this area of activity refers to all your professional educational activities where you are preparing for engagement with learners. When considering this descriptor, your main focus should be on everything that you have taken into consideration with regards to the design of learning. Things such as writing learning outcomes, choosing which activities to include given the time allowed for the session, thinking about how the content might link to future assessment, are all useful starting points. Some useful prompts in helping shape your thinking around addressing this descriptor are the reasons for your choice of subject material, the reasons for your choice of activities and teaching methods or techniques, if appropriate, the reasons for choosing particular learning technologies, and also how your choices facilitate your students' learning in general and within their subject area. The second descriptor is titled Teach and or Support Learning. This area of activity is about your direct engagement with learners. There's no restriction as to whether this engagement is on a one-to-one -one basis or in a group, or whether it is online or in a face-to-face -face setting. You can choose to focus on activities within a wide range of environments, such as classrooms, seminar rooms, lecture theatres, labs, offices, etc. This area of activity is asking you to think about what methodologies and approaches you use in your direct teaching and supporting learning interactions. A good starting point would be to consider what approaches you use and to also think about why these approaches are the most appropriate. The third dimension is titled Assess and Give Feedback to Learners. Here, you are asked to consider how you use assessment and feedback as a way of encouraging learning and gauging student progress. The assessment you might be involved with can be formative or summative, and can be formal or informal. Similarly to the two previous descriptors, you are welcome to interpret and define this in a way which makes sense for your individual educational practice. A good starting point in addressing this descriptor would be to consider the main types of formative or summative, or both, assessments that you use with learners. Consider how and why you choose the particular approaches and methods you employ, so long as this was your own decision and not a pre-designed piece of assessment. Think about how you ensure your assessments are valid indicators of what you want your students to learn, that your marking is reliable, and how you ensure that the standards you set are appropriate. In terms of providing your learners with feedback, consider which feedback methods delivery you use and how do you ensure that the feedback you give allows learners to improve their understanding of the subject or their performance. The fourth descriptor is titled Develop Effective Learning Environments and Approaches to Student Support and Guidance. This descriptor asks you to interpret it in a way that is relevant to your practice. You could, for example, consider instances where you have developed an online learning environment or unit of learning and discuss how this was conducive to your students' learning, or talk about utilising the physical teaching space in such a way that it fosters interaction and active engagement with the material taught. 
If you have a pastoral aspect to your role, you could also consider discussing how you ensure that you build effective rapport with your tutees and how your demeanor allows them to feel comfortable in coming to you for advice and guidance. The fifth descriptor in this dimension is titled Engaging and Continuing Professional Development in Subjects, Disciplines and Their Pedagogy, Incorporating Research Scholarship and the Evaluation of Professional Aspects. This descriptor asks you to consider how you sustain and progress your educational development. For example, you could think about discussing your participation in activities which extend your professional development in this field. For instance, attending workshops run by the EDU, the graduate school or your faculty or department. Whether you attend any teaching and learning conferences or if you undertake any educational research. You could also talk about how you support your teaching through any other type of professional development that might be relevant, such as reading educational literature. This video was designed to introduce you to the first of three dimensions of practice of the UKPSF. The next step for you would be to watch the UKPSF core knowledge and UKPSF professional values video to gain a better understanding of the framework in its entirety. <laughs>